Hey guys, Buff Q here again. Happy New Year. Hope you're all doing well as always. Thought I'd come to you tonight with a quick video on the um, Buff Q32 knife collection as of the end of 2017 and beginning of 2018. Now I'll go ahead and say up front this is not the extent, this is not the full extent of my collection. Uh, it is, however, um, the the these are the knives I carry more than anything else. These are the ones that I I end up turning to um, more say more so than than uh, the other knives I have. This is probably about fifty percent of the collection. Uh, the other fifty percent uh, I may show you guys eventually. It's nothing real special. Um, it's it's knives that you know we all see a little bit more often. Uh, however, these are the ones that I prefer to carry. These are the ones I carry the most. Uh, or in some cases, these are the ones that have kind of a sentimental story attached to them. And um, I'm not going to go into anything specific on these knives. You can you can find out all that stuff uh, online already. I'm not going to go into weight or dimension or uh, construction or blade steel, any of that stuff. I'm just going to show you guys a quick a quick view of what I have. And this is basically, this video is to ask your, your help, your opinion. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think might make uh, for a good uh, addition for my next knife purchase. I've never done that before. I thought that might be kind of interesting, but uh, I wanted to see what, what knife, if anything, you guys think would be a, a good addition to this collection. Uh, something maybe I'm not aware of yet, or something I'm already aware of, but I don't currently own. Uh, and so with that being said, we'll just jump right into it. We'll start with the Spider Co., since that's the majority of my collection. Uh, up here on the top left corner, of course, is the Paramilitary 2. That's an excellent blade. Below that is my um, Pacific Salt, the H1 Steel. Uh, that knife, I probably carry this knife more than anything else in my collection. Uh, it's a knife I don't mind beating up a little bit. Just a great blade. I carry that knife quite a bit. Um, below that is uh, the knife that kind of started this whole infection for me. Uh, that brown Endura 4 FFG, that was the first, uh, I'll say the first quality pocket knife I ever owned. It was given to me by my grandfather after I graduated college, and so that was kind of the knife that started it all for me. Below that one is uh, another Endura 4 with the uh, green scales. Below that, uh, we have a couple of Delicas, one in the bright, almost fluorescent orange, and purple below that. I like the orange because if you're outside, say you're outside hiking or uh, you know doing any kind of yard work, anything, if you drop a black knife outside in the grass, good luck finding it. Okay, you drop that, if you can't find that outdoors, you've got bigger problems. <laughs> okay, very obvious. I like how bright it is, and usually when I do end up going on like a hike, a day hike, or something like that. Usually this is the knife I end up bringing with me just because of how bright it is. Uh, the purple one below that, my my that's kind of inspired by my mother. My mom's favorite color has always been purple, so when I found that they had a purple Spyderco, uh, I thought, yeah, that's, that's another one I need to add to the collection. Below that are my two dragonflies. Um, one is the H1 variant, and the other is just the, the traditional dragonfly. These actually are in different... Um, uh, blade finishes. This is a serrated. This is a plain edge. Almost all of these knives that you'll see here are plain edge knives just because I prefer a plain edge. Uh, however, I do own at least one serrated knife and that's the H1 Dragonfly there. Uh, my last little Spider Co. is the, the Rhodey. Uh, this is a knife that you can... Most of these knives you can already see uh, more in-depth reviews on on my channel. The roadie is kind of an interesting little knife because of its uh, what what the reason Spider Co created the knife, the whole thing with TSA and being allowed to carry a small pocket knife on an airplane uh, and whatnot. So that's kind of an interesting little knife. Uh, down below that is our Leatherman Squirt. Uh, if you don't have any of the um, Leatherman products, any of their multi tools, uh, check them out as soon as you can. Uh, great products, very well made, very tough, very rugged. Um, excellent little multi-tool that I've used quite a bit. Moving on up here, uh, other than Spyderco, which is my favorite brand, my next favorite would probably be Benchmade. Uh, up in the top left here we have the Barrage. 
Uh, kind of an interest, interesting story behind that one you can find on my channel. Uh, below that is a standard Griptilian, probably Benchmade's uh, most popular, probably most uh, top-selling, rather, knife. Um, just excellent blade, excellent construction, uh, great steel, great lockup, great finish, just an excellent knife. Below that is the Mini Grip. On down here we have Benchmade Proper. Uh, as far as I know, this is Benchmade's first attempt at a traditional non-locking folding knife, what some of us may call, uh, you know, a, a, a grandfather knife or gentle, gentleman's knife. Um, this is kind of like your grandfather's old pocket knife just on steroids. Okay, excellent knife. Kind of an interesting little story on that one. You can see we've got a little blemish on it. I accidentally dropped this knife into a bonfire one night, uh, but it's okay. You can see the video on that. Um, it's uh, it's dummy proof, so it uh, it still stood up pretty well. Below that, this is my uh, flip it over so you can, you can see specifically what it is. Although you should be able to tell already, this is in fact my uh, Victorinox Cadet. Uh, this is an excellent blade. I rarely leave home without that that knife in my pocket. Um, reviewed by Nut and Fancy, and uh, I completely agree with his assessment of the knife. Uh, very well made. I can flip it back over here. There we go. Very well made. Uh, great for lots of purposes. Um, just an excellent all-around knife slash multi-tool. Uh, below that, we get into the few SOG knives I own. Uh, this one here is the Mini Aegis. Then we have the Twitch 2 and the Flash 1. Um, the nice thing about, especially about uh, knives like this this Twitch, Twitch 2 here with this finish uh, if you're in a place where you, you you've, you're going to carry a knife, but you're uh, trying to be wary of, you know, not wanting to uh, scare whoever's grandmother may be sitting next to you, uh, a knife sort of like this, this mini Aegis, may startle uh, startle someone a little bit more than say this little Twitch Two would, just purely cosmetically. Um, this one looks a little bit more friendly. You know, we're getting into the, the aesthetics of these. But this one looks a little bit more, um, I hate to say safe, but a little less scary to someone who doesn't know anything about knives, whereas this one may look a little bit more aggressive. Okay, we all know that there really isn't no, there's no major difference between any of these, but some definitely have a more uh, aggressive appearance than others. But anyway, guys, that's my little collection here. Um, let me know what you think, uh, what you think might be a good addition uh, for the next knife on the channel here. Uh, like I said, I've never really done that before. I've always just kind of purchased whatever I, I thought has, has caught my eye. Um, but a lot of you guys are, are probably getting to know me pretty well but this by this point as far as what brands I like, what I like to carry, and what style I like. So with this information, let me know if you have any ideas for me uh, or just let me know what you think in general. Anyway, guys, hope you have a great New Year's and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. See you next time.